censorship report here tonight on Mike of the Night because we are in this mess because of censorship and they are creating this a big mess because they want to implement more censorship, right? So let's see what we got here, folks. U.S. House passes bill renewing warrantless surveillance under FISA Section 702 amid privacy concerns. Oh, my God. Guys, do you know what this means? This is actually an extremely big deal. Warrantless surveillance. Warrantless surveillance. So they could come and surveil you without a warrant. Wow. Okay. The Fourth Amendment is being ignored in the name of the na of, of national security. Ignoring rising privacy concerns, the U.S. House of Representatives gave the green light on Friday to a bill renewing the warrantless surveillance program under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance FISA Section 702 for the next two years. What? However, the vote witnessed the piecing together of conservative resistance that had stalled a prior, uh, pr a prior chance at its approval. A shorter renewal period, as opposed to an initially proposed five-year term, was agreed upon in an attempt to win the Republican dis dissidenters, accumulating in a 273 to 147 vote in favor of the bill. Increasing distrust concerning governmental surveillance powers has been apparent of late, especially uh, amongst some conservatives who want to see the Fourth Amendment protected. The Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution protects citizens from unreasonable searches and seizures by the government. And the Founding Fathers put uh, the Bill of Rights, the uh, you know, they put the Constitution, they put all this stuff in place knowing that governments turn evil, knowing that governments will do this to its people over time when they accumulate too much power. The power is in the people. Without the people, there's no, there's no government, there's no, you know what I mean? There's no body, right? So interesting, very interesting. This is, wow. This is a big deal, folks. This is a hugely big deal. This is, this is, um, this is, this is not good. Uh, guys, I'm really sorry, man. Like if you're living in the United States, Canada's already worse than, than off than what this is already. But this is pretty bad if you're living in the United States, man. Wow, this is... Okay, let's move on here. Uh, Rumble enhances user experience with new recommendation algorithm. The recommendation algorithm is just Rumble Heroes. Uh, a move to boost creator visibility and platform engagement. We are, I think, 120 subscribers since March of 2023. We, we've gained 120 subscribers. They've closed the window us, on us on Rumble. We're not... You have to come and find us if you want to come to this show. We're not promoted. We're not a pick. We're not a editor's pick. We, we are nothing. We are zero on every platform. And unfortunately, the people watching now have come over here from other means uh, or have bookmarked us to find us. Unfortunately, um, yeah, the, it, it, it's, the algorithm has been working against small private citizen content creators. If people are getting paid to do this, like what I'm doing, they're controlled opposition. They're controlled opposition if they're getting paid for this. I don't make enough to pay my... I don't even pay... I don't. I have to, I have to do Mike in the Night on Rumble because I get 36 cents, 40 cents an episode. I have to do Mike in the Night on Rumble for one year straight. Uh, for, uh, 52 episodes in one year to <coughs> maybe make $100? $150? Maybe? So, so, yeah. Anyways. Okay, UK plans physical uh, facial recognition expansion empowering cops to scan faces in the street. The, again, this is, this is crazy. This draconian 1984 or Orwellian is out of control here. The UK is 55.5 million pounds push for facial recognition technology risks a profound invasion of privacy setting a precursor precedent for surveillance overreach and the uk in the uk the government has presented its plans for a large scale increase of the use of facial recognition technology which the police want to deploy in 
a number of ways across a range of locations. According to Big Brother Watch, taxpayers... So these guys are good guys, Big Brother Watch. We, we brought them up multiple times on the channel over the years. Taxpayers in the country will foot the bill amounting to the total of 230 million pounds, some 288 million in return for financing this expansion of what the right, rights groups call Orwellian tech. Citizens will be subject, subjected to even more intense, massive surveillance. So they're saying that shoplifting is a major reason behind them. Uh, the plans look like uh, killing a fly with an elephant gun. Uh, there will be a convoy of live facial recognition vans, mobile units in crowded areas of high streets and elsewhere in the cities. So they're going to pay some guy to sit there, eat Twinkies, and listen to the ball game or football match or whatever. And drive a van around that's that's already mobilizing and scanning people's faces. Man, this is crazy. I mean, is anybody as a like? This is this is, uh, and then it says these plans of not having these plans not having been set up for a vote by neither the parliament nor the citizens. So nobody voted on this, and called this scheme an abysmal waste of public money on a dangerously authoritarian and inaccurate technology this is crazy this is this is this is anyways i'm i don't know what to tell you guys this is okay let's move on state department wants to use video games to tackle ukraine disinformation um new funding for shaping online narratives and i remember us covering this a few months ago the u.s state department moves to utilize esports as a tool in their fight against so-called misinformation in Ukraine uh, as evidenced uh, by the recent grant listing. The plan involves training Ukrainians in competitive video gaming while currently enhancing their skills in counter uh, counteracting foreign propaganda and disinformation within those online gaming spaces. This agenda seemingly fits into a broader strategy implemented since President Joe Biden, selection Joe Biden, let me correct that, took office in 2021. The State Department, under his leadership, has increasingly focused on on tackling perceived disinformation, resorting in some instances to fund in entities known for censorship pressure. So there it is right there, folks. Just wanted to kind of throw that out there. And uh, 